Welcome to Liberate University. Liberate University is free educational content released for the benefit and enjoyment of all. Many thanks to our gracious family of world-class practitioners for sharing their work. Hi, my name is Lonnie. I'm a certified hypnotist and I'm a practitioner here at Liberate Hollywood. Um, I also have a meditation class here on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. called Hypnotic Mind to Mind. And today I'm going to give a little brief intro to hypnosis. Um, allow you to experience it yourself and know your body well. Take home self hypnosis technique that you can do on your own anytime you like. Now, first, a little bit about me and why you should even listen to me. Um, I began studying um, hypnosis about five years ago while living on the East Coast. And I started it because, um, I guess, during a dark period in my life, um, after a breakup, which sounds so cliche, I was. Um, Basically, you know, I felt like if I was struggling in an area of my life, and as I was struggling, I was examining other areas of my life as well. And I think when you're struggling through one period, one aspect of your life, and you kind of start examining everything, and as I was examining all the other areas of my life, I started questioning everything. Um, and I was wondering um, and pondering kind of like the meaning of, um, I guess, I wanted some more meaning in my life. I wanted to be connected to something. I was kind of bored with the monotony of kind of nine to five existence. And so as I was struggling, I began to meditate daily. Meditate and meditate and meditate some more. And it's funny, uh, my uncle recently said to me that, um, he said, for as long as I've known you, I've always uh, known you not to settle in life. Um, you've always seemed really curious and restless in a positive sense. And I think he was right um, because every time, you know, I, I basically, you know, was at a point where I was looking for more meaning. I felt there was more to life than just this, this kind of non five existence. And like with any practice where you engage and focus inwards, and you try to find your contentment inside, my surroundings started to um, show me clues, give me, was giving me breadcrumbs to follow, essentially. And from that, I was led to many synchronicities, and meditation soon led me to hypnosis. And during this time, when I was studying all these things, NLP, hypnosis, I was talking to a friend of mine on the East Coast who was a hairstylist. And I basically was telling her all these things, these kind of odd things at the time that I was getting into. And she said, how odd, this is really weird. She goes, I literally just had a client in my chair that has very similar interests to you. Well, I found out she had exactly the same interest as I was engaging in, and she was making a great living out of it. So. At that time, I, I kind of worked to get her contact information, and I was privileged enough to get some sessions with her. And I say privileged because what I didn't know is on the East Coast in New York City, she was serving clientele that were Pulitzer Prize winning novelists and writers and professional actors and celebrities. And I was very outside her scope of clientele. But I got those sessions with her, and I was just blown away. I was blown away. I left in the city before, before you and I realized the possibilities that hypnosis offered. Uh, I was generally someone who was really self-critical and very prone to negative thinking, and I just realized that the possibilities and the potential that existed if I were to steer the direction of my own life. And that's basically what I did. Um, the number of years after that, the East Coast, I started studying. I went to schools and studied other practice teachers, and to this day, I continue to study and hone my skills. And I continue to learn um, from new teachers and gain knowledge in the industry. So that's a little bit about me. Um, and so what even is hypnosis? 
if you talk to a thousand hypnotists, you'll get a thousand different answers. And there's a lot of debate uh, and kind of sometimes animosity about what hypnosis even is. Uh, but I kind of like to say are my thoughts on it. First, oftentimes people think of hypnosis as this thing that's being done to people. Especially if you watch movies, media, like films like Get Out, which is a phenomenal film. But if you saw the depiction of hypnosis in that film, it can look rather startling. Reality, um, hypnosis is not some mind controlling aspect. Or hypnotists aren't some mind controllers um, altering consciousness. Hypnosis is simply a tool that you can use to actually control areas of your life where you feel like you don't have control. Hypnosis is simply a mental process. It's a process. The hypnotist serves as a guide, but you, you, are the explorer. You're being guided through visualizations, suggestions, mental imagery techniques, and strategies, which evokes within you ideas and evokes within you feelings and sensations and your own problem solving. So essentially, what they say oftentimes is hypnosis is self-hypnosis. The hypnotist isn't the one doing the work, but you are. You're the one engaging your own mind. You're the one thinking and processing information. Essentially, you're the one hypnotizing yourself. So, uh, and this is probably also the reason why I don't stick strictly to meditation. Meditation typically is known as kind of something as passive. A thought pops into your mind, and then you're uh, kind of ex expected to acknowledge that thought and kind of let it drift out of your consciousness. But hypnosis, hypnosis has an intent, has an agenda. It's goal-oriented and encourages you to have an active, alert mind. The whole point of hypnosis is to think, is to engage in your own thinking process. And in that sense, it kind of allows you to be more of yourself in the process. Sometimes meditation gets uh, bad rap because it's very hard for people, it's damn hard for people to just allow thoughts to just drift away. But hypnosis, you can engage in those thoughts. You can allow yourself to be active in those thoughts. So, um, and so how I define hypnosis, or define it, is kind of like the union of suggestibility and awareness focused inwards. It's seeking ideas to alter perception so you can create a new reality. And it does this by bypassing the critical fac faculty. But what does that all mean? First of all, um, a lot of people get uh, sidetracked or freaked out by the word suggestibility. Oh, geez, you know, suggestibility. Uh, the reality is we are being suggested to on a daily basis, whether we watch car commercials, whether we walk, walk around here in Hollywood and see these massive billboards and ads, or every time a friend of ours tries to entice us to go to a certain movie or event, we are living in a world suggestion and we can easily maneuver around this world and we can make our own decisions okay. um, but the beauty is that hypnosis hypnosis allows us to provide the suggestions that we're already seeking in order to attain a goal that we really want that we really desire in life so Hypnosis and suggestibility is actually something we're, we're seeking. If we have desires and goals, we're trying to move forward to and attain in life. So basically, hypnosis provides us a suggestion, and it does so by bypassing the critical faculty. What the hell is the critical faculty? So the critical faculty is basically like this invisible barrier between our conscious processes and our unconscious processes. So they say, and it's probably a debate, about 95 to 98% of our processing is completely unconscious. We, uh, we process, for instance, um, we, our heart beats automatically, right? We don't just ask our heart to beat, so um, to pump blood. So basically, 
like all of our body processes, they just do so automatically. We don't ask our body to function and operate. We're also, um, we also have all of these habituated patterns. We have values and beliefs and limiting beliefs, emotions and memories all outside of our conscious awareness. And we have this basically little percentage, two to five percent, limited conscious processing. So we're essentially unconscious beings. We live in a state of consciousness. So if you want to kind of think about this in a way, conscious processing is where we live in a world of this or that, either or or. It's where we often can get stuck and confused and torn and basically where our problems can reside. But our unconscious processing is where there's a world of limitlessness, where we live in a world of abstraction and symbolism and metaphor, where we live with multiple truths of both and and. It's where our solutions reside. So if you want to create change, you have to learn how to access our unconscious processing. So how do we even contemplate doing that? Well, it's been said, if you're kind of like a geek, as I am, um, with Hebb's Law, uh, neurons that fire together wire together. What the hell is that? Mean? So anytime we say or do something with repetition, we're creating an unconscious pattern. So for instance, say you get a new job, you have no idea how to get there. Put on your GPS, right? And you, and you take the G direction that the GPS gives you, and you get to your destination. However, over time, right, you continue to drive that same, um, drive that same direction, the same roads, and eventually you'll bypass the critical, critical faculty and you won't need to use your GPS anymore because you've memorized innately the way to go. So essentially, all that means is the more we do something, the more we say something, the more we do things through repetition, we are strengthening our neural pathways in our brain. And when we strengthen those neural pathways in our, in our brain, it's basically like taking that same road over and over and over again we are instilling a habit. We are ingraining a habit. However, this is, isn't always a good fit. So say you want a habit that you want to break because it's no longer serving you. So say you procrastinate or you uh, are a smoker or you uh, basically live in a state of anxiety. Well, we pretty much ingrained that into our being for a good long while. So it's our job and my job as a hypnotist to help you break those habitual patterns so you weaken the neural pathways in your brain. And once you weaken those neural pathways in your brain, you have the ability to create a new neural pathway, a new habit that serves you so much better. So if there are anything, it's like how we condition ourselves to eat healthy or go to the gym. First is the shorts. Job. It's something that's gorgeous. But over time, the more we do, it becomes easier and effortless. And the cool thing with something like this is that we experience the mental process and hypnosis on a daily basis. Anytime you get read a story and get immersed in the story, so much so that you forget you're holding a book of pages, you're in a state of hypnosis. Anytime you are driving a car, get consumed in thoughts, get to your destination, have no idea how you got there, you're living in a state of hypnosis. <clears throat> and anytime you watch a movie or watch a, t a TV show, you get lost into that world, you're living in a state of hypnosis. You narrow your focus on that screen. And you bypass the critical faculty every time you're emotionally charged and absorbed by that film. Otherwise, if we were living consciously every time we watched a TV show, we'd be like, hey, that's Brad Pitt, that's an actor, oh, that's an actor. But we don't do that. Do we? Yeah. we get so absorbed and lost that we forget we're in a movie theater with other people, theater all together. The problem is that we make mental movies in our lives every day minute of the day. And the majority of the time, our mental movies are about things we're worrying about 
in our lives. And our narrator is often really self-deprecating. It's telling us that we're not good enough, that we can't accomplish this, that we're shitty, and all of these things. So the more and more that we make these sort of mental movies, these emotionally charged mental movies, we're essentially harmfully hypnotizing ourselves every minute of the day. So it's our job really to create empowering and positive inner movies. And so, how do we do that? And that's what I'm gonna show you today. How to alter your internal world, your internal movies, so you can live and think more positively about the goals and the life that you want in the future. So before we do that, is there any questions? Okay. So before we do that activity, um, oftentimes many people are wondering what it feels like to be in hypnosis. And like I said earlier, it's it's you have an alert and awake mind as you're doing it. It's like a normal conversation that I'm having here right now with you. And depending how you feel also depends on the suggestions I'm, I'm giving. Oftentimes people might feel light and free and kind of floating disassociated with the sensation. Or perhaps you might feel warm, weighted, and grounded down to the floor. Or you might have an amazing sensation of just sitting there on their chair and nothing seeming to happen. But that doesn't mean it's not working. There's no right or wrong here. Just like anything, hypnosis is a practice. And the more and more you engage in it, the more and more interesting it becomes. And the sensations and the thoughts and the feelings that you have increase and grow. And sometimes you might hang on every word I say. Or you, since you have a dual consciousness, you might have little debates in your mind. But is this working? What's happening? Oh my god, what the world is going on? Or you might drift, your mind might drift out of complete consciousness and just let it. Because, like I said, there's no right and wrong here. Basically, what you experience is the perfect experience for you. And no matter what you're thinking you're doing, um, essentially, you're still accessing those unconscious processes to create change. Yes? Will I do something that I don't want to do? No. <laughs> Especially not in a therapeutic sense, uh, since I do one-on-one -on -one client work. You know, if they're doing a stage hypnosis show, and you're, you might be asked to cluck like a chicken. However, um, the cool thing is, and I believe with entertainment hypnosis, that um, the people who want to do that offer up to do that. Those will be the ones who go on stage and do that. Um, and it's basically something, and you're not gonna kind of overthrow your morals and belief systems and your values and things like that. Um, it's, it's basically, um, especially in a therapeutic sense, we're basically just helping you achieve the goals that you're already seeking. So it's like, yeah, Give it to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, um, in that sense, it's basically what it's so catered to the client that the whole goal is just to get you to move forward to what you want and, and to bypass any obstacles or, or issues that you might be having and get it there. Okay, cool. So, if anybody wants to engage in a little hypnosis exercise right now, get relaxed sit down, and uh, basically, yeah, have your feet on the floor, and try not to cross any limbs or hands. And so, what I'm basically going to have you do is pick a focal point in front of you. And I usually ask you to pick something a little over your forehead, so you get to strain your eyes a little, just a little bit. I'll just ask you to kind of soften or defocus your gaze. So looking up almost? Yeah, so if you're kind of like straight, you're like not moving your head, kind of just moving your eyes up. So like up or more? Yeah, so you, you want to pick up in the center, but just a little higher up. So you're, okay. so you're straight. You know what I mean? Um, and basically, 
all I'm going to have you do, this is something very simple, is I'm going to have you check out that focal point. In a moment, not just yet, I'll have you open, I'll be basically doing a countdown from 10 to 1. I'll have you open and close your eyes at certain points. And that's basically it. It's that easy. So again, just focus on that focal point and soften your gaze. And as you do, just close your eyes. And 10, imagine a wave of relaxation. A wave of relaxation, a wave of comfort traveling to the top of your head all the way down to your toes. Simple wave of relaxation. As that number 10 fades and relaxes out of your mind. And open your eyes, close your eyes, and nod. Imagine, bring to mind, an additional wave of comfort, an additional wave of relaxation as it slowly moves on down your body. As you picture, imagine that number nine. Relaxing, dimming, disappearing, disintegrating out of your mind. Open your eyes and close your eyes. Eight, and another wave of relaxation. Another wave of comfort. Traveling, moving on down. Top of your head, all the way down to your toes. For some, relaxation comes in the lateness, the buoyancy, the floating feeling. And for others, relaxation comes in the weight, the heaviness, the warmth even, as it settles on in. No, no, we each process relaxation differently. Just notice all the ways you are relaxing now. That's right. As you watch that number eight fade, then disappear. Relax out of your mind. You lazily open your eyes. That's right. Close. And seven, an additional wave of relaxation traveling down the body. Top of your head all the way down to your toes. in the right body. Not your body. And some of you might. Visualize that seven going dim and distant. Others might hear that seven phase out of your mind. As you open your eyes, lazily close your eyes. And six, and another wave of relaxation traveling down. Settling in. Sinking in deeper and deeper. Top of your head all the way down to your toes. And I'm curious, if a relaxation were a color, what color comes to mind tonight for you? Imagine that color traveling on down from the top of your head all the way down to your toes now. For others, relaxation comes in the recollection of memories, of times you've been so, so relaxed. Now, I'm curious what you see in those memories you've been relaxed. You feel 
when you think of those times, being so relaxed. What you hear or don't hear. As you relax further. As that number six fades, disappears out of the distance. As you lazily open those eyes. And close those eyes and five and another wave of relaxation sets in. Layers upon layers of relaxation traveling down the body. That relaxation just sinking in with your neck and shoulders, down those arms and hands. Sinking deeper and deeper into your body now. Number five fades and disappears into the distance. And you lazily open his eyes and close your eyes. And for an additional wave of relaxation settles in. Relaxation that's traveling down your back, the hips, thighs, down those legs and feet. Relaxation settling at the bottom of your feet and send extra relaxation to those areas that mean it the most. Now, listen in all the ways your body likes to relax and it does electrolyze me. Allow you to sink on in and settle on down further and further into your body. All the ways you like to act. As that four drifts out into the distance, and disappears. As you raise the those eyes and close those eyes, an additional wave of relaxation travels on them. That relaxation softening the muscles around your eyes. Softening the muscles around your mouth, allowing that relaxation to sink on in, soothing, smoothing the muscles around your face, sinking in deeper and deeper. And notice all the ways you let to relax now as that moves down throughout your body. Top of your head all the way down to your toes, sinking in more. As that feeling fades and dims and relaxes out your mind, as you lazily open your eyes and close your eyes naturally, another wave of relaxation sets in. And notice the more and more you relax, the more and more comfortable you are inside. More comfortable inside. Did you see that number? Since that fading out, you open your eyes and close your eyes. And one additional layer of relaxation sets in that feeling and sensing and seeing all the ways your body likes to relax more and more. And in this light, black state, notice how powerful your mind really is. You simply ask or you give yourself suggestions and your body responds accordingly. I'll show you how you're doing that right now. In more ways. So imagine or focus, focus now on your legs. And notice those legs relaxing more and more. And as those legs relax more and more, notice how heavy they become. Heavy relaxation and deeper. 
and so heavy like lead a concrete notice how those legs and those feet almost cemented to the ground and that weight and that heaviness and just notice how you can suggest in your own mind think in your own mind now my legs are so heavy. Say to yourself, my legs are so, so heavy. And notice that. Notice the more you say, my legs are like so heavy, that your body takes notice. That your body believes you. And for some people, that heaviness becomes even more the moment they try to lift those legs, they notice how much heavier those legs are. Just notice how powerful you are right now. How you can suggest something to your own self and believe it. And what would it be like now? to show you how your life can be in the future. Showing you the power of your own mind. So, for instance, now, think of a goal you wish to achieve. Some goal you wish to achieve. And now, just imagine or visualize a movie screen or folder. Perhaps you can see that movie screen, or perhaps you can just sense that movie screen in your own mind. And notice that you, on that movie screen, achieving your goal now. See yourself achieving that goal right now. As you see yourself, notice how you feel achieving your goal. Notice what you're thinking as you achieve your goal. That's right. Notice how you're reacting to the world, acting in the world, as you achieve that goal right now. Notice the positive thoughts you're thinking as you achieve that goal. When you have that in your mind, when you've got it, when that feeling feels so good, I invite you to float inside that screen, float inside your body, and experience you achieving that goal right now. See what you see as you achieve that goal through your eyes. Feel what you feel. Hear what you hear as you achieve that goal right now. Bring all oh, in your mind as you're doing this, you're seeing this, experience this right now. Notice how it helps you as you experience the and your achievement and your success. And maybe you can even notice the very first step you took in achieving that goal. You gain some new insights, new learnings, and some new knowledge for yourself. You can float back into your body now and notice the new learnings. Noticing your new insight, noticing how you can process and learn in a different way while in state of hypnosis. Learn how powerful your mind is. <coughs> Access new information and create an receptive And once you have that very, very first step on your goal to success, you slowly come back into the room. You slowly come back into your body. Slowly come back to the here and now. 
few insights. As one comes to the surface three times quicker. Wide awake and alert, bringing back new insights and learnings. Welcome back to the view. And welcome to hypnosis. Thank you all for coming. If anyone has additional questions, I'm here to answer them. Thank you for being a part of this class. We hope to see you at the next one.